Okay, so we are working on motion with variable velocity. So far what we've done is we've talked about motion that of Rover, the dog, that moved back and forth on a straight line, back and forth, back and forth. He doesn't actually go up in the air or change direction. And so that's where we're going to now. And we're going to call that displacement, is like the vector quantity of distance or position, is I'm going to call it R of t, is now we're going to, all R of t is going to depend upon some function x of t and y of t, where this is the x component or in the y component or a horizontal and vertical component or two components of a vector. And so now we are defining displacement not as just some single function, but as two functions, an x value and a y value. So if I want to find the velocity of t, well, that we know is the derivative of r of t dt, which here is going to be the derivative x prime at t and y prime at t. and y prime at t, and this will be the velocity. Similarly, if I want the acceleration, I want the acceleration, well the acceleration is simply going to be the derivative of the velocity, or the second derivative of the displacement, so I know it's going to be x double prime of t, y double prime of t. And so I go from Displacement to velocity derivative, velocity to acceleration derivative dt, derivative dt. If I'm going to acceleration to, I'm going to do integral. If I'm going to go this way from velocity to displacement, I again do integrating. Okay, and so there is a definite relationship between them all. Let's try an actual example. Let's consider this. So a squirrel at an initial position, three meters high, running through the trees along the ground. The ground has small tunnels in it, so the squirrel can go underground. The velocity is expressed by this particular vector here for t being 0 to 10. Uh, and we have time in seconds and distance are in meters. x is the horizontal motion and the y is the vertical motion. So we're asked to find the speed of the squirrel at t seconds. Well, we are told that this is the velocity at given time t. So if I want to find v at 2, it's simply going to be 2 plus 1 is 3, minus 1, and so that's the velocity vector. If I want to find the speed, well, that's going to be the absolute value, the magnitude of that, which is, let me just, which is going to be then the square root of 3 squared plus a negative 1 squared. If I throw it in my calculator, I end up with 3.16. 3.16 meters per second is the speed of our little squirrel. Okay, so now it says at what time is the direction of the squirrel running parallel to j? Well, j is the unit vector in the direction of the y value. Okay, so j is the unit vector in y. Remember, i is the unit vector in terms of the x, and then k is the unit vector in the z direction. So I want to know when is my velocity, which is t plus 1 minus 1, equal to k, 0, 1. Well, if I'm going to do that, I, have, I can see from here that negative 1, negative 1 is equal to k. Neg k from the y value, negative 1 is equal to 1k. And I also know that t plus 1 is equal to k times 0. So it's just equal to 0. So I can plug the k in. And so t is going to be negative 1. But if we look here, t is defined only from 0 to 10. And so it will never be parallel to j. C part says, at what time is the squirrel running parallel to this particular vector? Well, here, let me pull the question here, I can see a little bit better. When is it running parallel to this vector? Well, then I can say, well, t plus 1, negative 1, when is this velocity vector running parallel? So it's just got to be a scalar multiple of this vector. 
when I look at that, I know that negative 1 is equal to k from the y values, and I also know that t plus 1 is equal to negative 5k. Plugging this in, I have two equations, two unknowns. I know that t plus 1 is equal to 5, and so t is equal to 4. So at 4 seconds, the squirrel is running parallel to this particular vector. D part says, when is it running perpendicular to 3, 4? Well, if I'm going to be perpendicular to 3, 4, then I know that the dot product, when I, or scalar product, when I do this, it has to be 0. And so I can say 3t plus 3, when I multiply the top, plus the multiplication of the bottom equals 0. And so I know 3t is equal to 1, and so t is equal to 1 third. So at 1 third of a second, my squirrel is running perpendicular to this particular vector here. Continuing on with E part, it says show that the acceleration is constant. Well, if my velocity is equal to t plus 1, and y is negative 1, I know the acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity, which means I take the derivative of the top, which is the derivative of this is just going to be 1. The derivative of negative 1 is 0. Therefore, because this doesn't, is not dependent upon the time at all, therefore it is constant. Acceleration is constant. On the F, it says find the position of the squirrel at the position of the squirrel, squirrel at one second. Well, when at one second, that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to find the position r at one. Well, in order to do it, I need to find r at t, which is going to be the integral of the velocity. The and so if I'm going to do the, the integral of the velocity, I know it's going to be, I'm going to do the integral of t plus 1 and minus 1 dt, which will give me 1 half t squared plus t plus some constant 1. But also when I take the integral of negative 1, I'm going to get negative t plus a different constant 2. And so now this is my position. But I need to find C1 and C2. And so if I go back to the original part of the question, one of the things that I have to recognize is that the initial position is he is 3 meters high. And so my initial coordinate point, when t equals 0, I am 3 high. And I am going to call this 0 because it's going to be relative to the initial position. So it is 0. And so when I'm doing this, these components, I have to think carefully about what's going on up and down with my object or squirrel and left and right, and think of them in two different directions. So now with this particular piece of information, I can plug that in here, and I know that 0 is equal to, so this 0, if I plug 0 in, is going to equal to 1 half 0 squared plus 0 plus c1. And so it's clear that c1 equals 0. And I can say, I also have to say 3, the y values is negative t plus c2. And so it's clear that c2 is equal to negative 3. So my position is going to be 1 half t squared plus t plus 0 and a negative t minus 3. And the question's asking me to find what's the position when t is equal to 1. The position when t is equal to 1, so I'm going to do r at 1 now, and I plug it in, I get a half plus t is going to be a half plus 1 and the bottom is going to be negative 4, so it's going to be 
1.5 and negative 4 is my position meters from, from its initial starting position of 0, 3. G part finally says, horizontally, how far is the squirrel from its original position once it goes underground? So we have to think about what does this mean here? That means that in the position function, the y value is 0. Because if he is above ground, it's positive. When he goes below ground, it becomes negative. So we're looking for when he goes underground. And so if we take r of t, we want to find when the y value specifically the y value is 0. So at negative t, negative 3. And so here, t is equal to negative 3, which again is impossible because time is between 0 and 10. If this would have been possible, then I would have taken 3, negative 3, and plugged it into this particular function here. And so it would have been, if I would have followed it through, 1 half times negative 3 squared plus a negative 3. And that would have given me negative 9 over 2 minus 3, which is negative 7.5 meters away from where he entered the ground, from the original starting position. Um, but because time can't be negative, this is impossible to do. But that's the process I would have done. I have to think about horizontal and vertical. This is talking about vertical. And there's our introduction to velocity and variable velocity.